Hey everyone, welcome to the Mary Tabbed Board of Supervisors meeting for Saturday, December 16th, 2023. Uh, time is now 9 a.m. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Our first item, as always, is the Pledge of Allegiance. That's a very good price. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. As always, the meeting is recorded. We ask that everyone please silence your cell phones so we can the meeting. Uh, hand sanitizer and masks are still available for anybody that is interested. Anybody wishing to address the board, we ask that you sign in at the front of the room. And when you make your comment, please come up to the podium and clearly state your name and address for the record. Uh, we don't have anybody else from Zoom as of yet, and there is no one signed in. Kelly. Yes. Um, yeah. Okay. Seeing no public comments, we'll move into the items for discussion. First item is the Comcast franchise renewal. This has been advertised, and a public hearing will be held at the Board of Supervisors meeting uh, this upcoming Thursday to adopt it. Next is the 2024 budget. This was accepted at the November Board of Supervisors meeting, advertised on Saturday, November 18th, and it was available for public inspection. Uh, there were no requests to inspect the budget. It was also available out on the Google Drive. Um, Kelly. Question about the budget. Can you talk about your Kelly? Acts 541, Richland Road, Richland. Question regarding the 2024 budget. Mm -hmm. What is the uh, amount proposed for the Marion Township Community Association for 2024? Give me one second, and I will look up the, the Parks and Recreation. Uh, recreation and other services is allotted $5,000. $5,000. So when you say recreation and other services, what is meant by other services? So that, that particular budget line is um, the playground, maintenance, the ball field, mowing of the, the grass in that area. That's typically what we put into that budget line. In previous years, when there was leftover, you guys came to us and asked to buy like, the concrete tables and things like that. All of that sort of thing fits into that budget line. We're not going to use that budget line to go buy like road salt or anything like that. So if there are projects or anything that the, the MTCA has, or if there's areas for improvement, like you say, hey, we're, we want to buy a uh, a thing to drag behind the tractor that Butch or, or Don can use to, to maintain the ball field, get us some quotes, make a request for funding on it, and we have $5,000 in, a, in a, a line to, to be able to do those requests. Now, my concern is like mowing up the grass. Where, where did that come from the budget prior to MTCA? Well, that was the parks and rec. We, we expanded the parks and rec okay. budget to okay. accommodate more than just the maintenance of the field. Okay. And when Don was doing work for the township, other than mowing grass over there, if it's there's mowing a, grass somewhere else, a, yeah, was, that was yeah, a there's a, a highway maintenance uh, wages line that gets like which is wages or Don if he's going out and the grass or It's on the yeah. road, 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 road. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And then, um, and like that might be later on the agenda for today regarding MTCA having a. Um, bill that they like to submit. It was not put on the agenda because of the agenda was published before we got back to it. Yeah. So, so if you make sure that request it is yes, it would be on Thursday's, yeah, on Thursday's okay. agenda. But that's specifically that's the kind of thing that we put in there. The other thing is like when the car bill rolls around, you guys ask to like have us reimburse for the signage, things like that. That's what that comes out of. That's recreation. Okay. Okay. Do you know about Irene how much money is in? The 2023. Uh, we'd have to check. Okay. Uh, but we can we can let you know. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um. All things being equal, on that particular item, we're gonna adopt the budget on Thursday night. The next item for Thursday night is we're gonna adopt the uh, real estate, street lights, sewer levy, and just overall tax rates. Uh, this is set at uh, 2.75 mils, street lights at 0.65 dollars, 65 cents, 
uh, front footage, uh, for front footage in the sewer levy is at fifty dollars still. We'll be assessing that next year after a year of high repair to see where that sits. Uh, but it's prudent to leave it as it is for the time being. Next is Act 537. We have asked Geo Paul Dust to make some minor changes to the special study, tapping fees, and other fees. Attorney McFarland will be reviewing. First developer is working on a different agreement with the WSA. Uh, we should include a clause that says all parties shall re uh, reevaluate that arrangement with us when uh, we, the time comes to actually construct the public sewer and connect with WSA. Oh, it's actually, that's not what I was to say. We should consider dates for the town uh, hall, but that's a couple of different items ahead. So I'll put my comment. Uh, sewage management program. The old guidebook was adopted by resolution last month. The Hydro Terra group submitted a draft letter. We will need a motion to approve that. The secretary is printed. The amount of was $64 for a uh, black double-sided um, or $320 for a color double-sided. Uh, we have a quotable mountain print, little mountain printing as well, $195.36 for black double sided or $340 for uh, color double sided. I think black and white is probably okay. Yeah. Just in the office? Uh, no, I think you're planning on sending that out before. Yeah. Yeah, I would say JDM is obviously the solution. Is that the is that the one that Kim said? Or the, yeah. So uh, Irene, what I was saying to Sue before you got here is I'm gonna try and change a little bit of the word choice on that to get it onto one page. Times sixty-four dollars. This is for eight hundred. Yeah, no, no, sixty-four dollars for eight hundred. Okay. Yeah, it's it's sixty-four bucks for eight hundred. That oh okay. yeah. So like I said, what I'm gonna do is mm -hmm. it's really close really close to being one page. Like it's just a little page. So if we scoot that up, that, that price will actually come down even further. Yeah. So uh, I'm okay with that. We'll do that Thursday. This one here is the news Short and sweet. Yeah. Okay. Because we got to get this letter out. Yep. So I, I, we'll have an answer Thursday night and then we can have you guys pull the trigger on that. Um, next is the 2023 LSA statewide program. Uh, this was the grant that we submitted for requesting uh, aid for the Tulpahawken PED and the emergency management coordinator supplies. Um, I heard anything yet, but we submitted it. Okay. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, it's good for any of those. It's going to be a while before we hear back. We have successfully submitted both. I think they're not going to be working until March of next year. Start of April. The list doesn't come out. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, next is the scheduling of the town hall. Uh, Joe Baldas recommended waiting until January when the special study is ready. Um, I think we need to wait to hear from Joe before we try to set any dates. Like, I know the 18th was bad enough, but to be blunt, I don't know if Joe's going to have this stuff done before then. That's really usually like Thursday meeting. Yeah, well, they're not going to be here yeah, this Thursday. Oh, yes. Now, but, yeah, that really gets about 30 days from this point in time. So, I uh, to wait and then if it's late January or February, so be it. <laughs> uh, Supervisor Brooks tendered his resignation effective the 27th of November. Uh, we have 45 days in which to accept that letter of resignation and then uh, 30 days to appoint somebody after the accepting of, uh, acceptance, acceptance of the resignation. Um, Based on the time frame on that, we're going to be accepting that at uh, January's uh, workshop meeting. So that falls within the 45 day window. But we already have received some interested parties reaching out. So we're going to start interviewing them at, in technically it's executive session. Um, and then picking somebody to build a gym spot. The MTCA storage trailer was placed. It looks good. It looks like it went relatively smoothly, hopefully. Um, we'll have the lease agreement to be signed. That's what we had talked about, just the, the, the red tape aspect of having non-township property technically on township property. So everything should be good. All the exhibits are in, it's drawn up, and we'll have the actual sign of the copy that Don, if you're gonna be here Thursday night, that you'd be able to, to sign on behalf of MTCA. Okay. Um, the proposed short-term rental ordinance, uh, the draft has been repaired, or prepared, excuse me. 
a uh, motion is needed to approve. Uh, we would need a resolution to send these. So I read through that so far. I, I think it's good. Um, the only thing that I would want to follow through on based on what Colin said is we need to do the other portion of it yourself. Set an invitation about what uh, time frame you are permitted to do a short term rather than just like you're running your house out every three days to some new person the entire year. Um, but that's not a that's not important. Um, in similar turn, uh, Kraft sent over some sample ordinances uh, for the long term rental inspection ordinance that we can talk about earlier in 2023. I've not gotten a chance to read through them, but the one that I did so far seems pretty on the nose, it's pretty straightforward. It's what we had talked about before. It's safety things, make sure you have a CI in the bathroom, that there's smoke detectors, you don't you know, have adverse living conditions. So I'm not opposed to it, because if you're running, if you're essentially running a business on threading a piece of property, you mm -hmm. should be subject to the same sort of health and safety checks that you would from a practical business, whether it's a hotel or anything else. So. Uh, emergency management coordinator report. Let's tell I actually just stepped out. Yeah. So we'll circle back to that and step back in. Uh, the Berks County Public Works Association for 2024 has set dates. The dates are Wednesday, January 10th. Uh, this is a just general association meeting. The snow makeup date for this is Thursday, January 11th. The next one is Thursday, April 11th. One, uh, excuse me, Wednesday, July 17th. And then Thursday, October 3rd, um, there is a rain date on, actually, wait, excuse me, the, uh, there isn't a rain date on any of them, anything other than the first one, and there are various registration dates. Um, this is generally open to anybody who's a road worker or anything like that. It's generally open. It's I'll make a, a motion to authorize. We don't need to well, okay. we'll be notified when the meetings occur and they need to register. Okay, well, I was going to motion to authorize the road crew to participate in any of those and then just register. Well, you need to make a motion to okay. That'd be easier. Okay, we'll just do that then. Okay. Uh, culverts and related site improvements, Marion Drive, North Sheridan, or excuse me, Marion Drive North, Sheridan Road, Marion Drive South, and the paving and guide rail improvements on Rikert Road. Everything has been completed. We made a motion last month to accept the change order number two and execute payment. We are still waiting on the final application of payment from CMS. For 2024, the road crew has gone out and looked at some of the roads. They've suggested that we look at Sheridan Road South from William Penn Boulevard, Logan County, Sheridan Road North from William Penn School Road, Southford Road, and Wintersville Road. So we're waiting for feedback from Chuck. Yeah. And so we're going to um, start working on getting uh, information from Charlie. Okay, good. Yeah, the little bit that I sidebarred with yep. this morning is there's there's no shortage of road work to do. The, the question is how, how do we figure out how eight percent of road work? Yeah. Um because like that the Sheridan Road south towards Lebanon, we basically have to take that whole road out. There is there is no spot remediation on that. That is full depth reclamation and regrade on that entire length of road, which as we know is about five hundred thousand dollars per mile. Right, but there's some, we know that there's some grants for infrastructure, mostly they're for federal highways, but we're going to do the best that we can. I know Chuck said he always uh, has some that looks across uh, his desk as far as like uh, looking for information like that. So Yeah, we'll definitely take yeah. grants at every opportunity, yeah. but there's, we're, we're going to have to pick the ones that right. fit the best and then chase grants for everything else. Okay. Uh, next, the equipment repairs. The little truck is in the shop because the windshield was not originally installed many, many years ago correctly, so it has resulted in the cab rusting out. Uh, John Wenzel Body Shop notified us that the entire cab had to be replaced due to bad rust on, on the top of the little truck. Uh, they provided an estimate of $2,751.30 plus the windshield. Um, Saying the windshield would be no more than 500. Okay, so I was trying to figure out the math on that one. Windshield shouldn't be more than 500 bucks. Was it? We don't have to turn so. Okay, motion is needed to approve. Uh, the total estimated for this is $3,251.30. The 
the original quote was $1,535.94. I'll make a motion to approve the, the change in price to make the necessary repairs to the truck. The price uh, is anticipated to be $3,251. Yeah, $151.30. That's roll call. Uh, Aye. Peter. I read. Really, I. Okay. The shoes on the little truck snowplow also need to be replaced. Which received quotes from Storks Plow for two non-carbide shoes for one hundred and ten dollars, two carbide shoes for two hundred and twenty. Uh, we need four shoes for the little truck and two for the tractor. Um, which recommends that we go with carbide, uh, six of them in total, or three pairs. Um, so we would need it's basically call it 660 bucks before tax for, for the shoes. Um that's no tax on it. Yeah, I mean there's gonna be tax on it too. No. Oh that's with tax. Tax is tax. Oh that's right. That's right. That's right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Still in. <laughs> uh, I think the quote includes tax. No, yeah, it should have. Yeah, it's down there. Yeah. Yeah, the lady said no tax. Yeah, well, as, as it should be, I just kind of forgot about that for a second. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the purchase of six carbide shoes for a total of six hundred and sixty dollars. Second, roll call, Peter. Hi, Irene. Hi. Do you want to tell them that you don't need a call? I'll, I'll okay. Next is signs and signposts. We got a quote from Miller Municipal Supply for four directional signs, 30 by 30 inch by 30 inch. They're $60.50 each, totaling $240. Three refaced speed limit signs. Um, uh, 35 mile per hour, these are $29.70 each, totaling $89.10. And five new 35 mile per hour speed signs, $50 each, totaling 250 Total for all that for Miller is $581.10. Um, we also have a separate quote in from Mainstream for 25 complete sign post kits. This includes the 10 foot posts, the receiver, and the hardware for $62 each. And then five ground post receivers for $19 each or 95 total. For all this is $1,645. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the purchase from Miller Supply as listed, totaling $581. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Okay. I'll also make a motion to approve the uh, purchase from Mainstream Industries as listed for a total of $1,645. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Next item on the agenda is guide reels. Uh, Engineer Hess has suggested we prioritize William Penn Boulevard for this year. Uh, Hickory Road and Ballinger can be done next year. We get an estimate to determine if projects need to be bid publicly. Um, I don't honestly think that we're going to get this in before December, so we'll have to talk to Chuck about um, how that will impact the overall project scope if we put William Penn in with Hickory and Bonner. That I imagine that's going to tip us into prevailing wage and certain other bid requirements. But we'll we'll talk and then find out. Unless he's much, much further along on William Penn than I think we are. So next is the extension of the stormwater pipe along Marion Drive to Main Street. Uh, we are still coordinating with UGI and the project is set for spring of 2024. The next two items around Ballinger Road, um, I'm going to omit discussion on based on the fact that uh, there is legal counsel involved. Uh, next, after that, is the Western Burks Joint Zoning Ordinance, Section 403. This is the little thing with the keeping of pets and small domesticated farm animals. Uh, we are still waiting for a date for the, the joint zoning. So wait until they have that, we're, we're just kind of treading water. Uh, Dutch Valley Food Distributors Landscaping Plan. Uh, Dave Meese with Dean and Sons will check with Dutch Valley to see if they agree to put in slats and fence instead of putting up trees and uh, get acknowledgement of acceptance from the neighbors. 
Okay. I assume we, we basically did that from somebody that that was well, and I thought the original like, trees were there. I see um, uh, the privacy of the line of sight, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Um, Valley Food Distributors uh, has asked for a letter of credit reduction. This is request number two. Uh, they're asking that six thousand seven hundred and fifty from the thirty six thousand five hundred and fifteen dollars and forty four cents be released. Um, as for the trees that they would yeah put in. yeah so we can't do anything with that yet. Nope. okay okay that's what I was reading to see if that was the trees or something else yeah okay uh, oh you were not okay so no. I'm sorry yeah that was the trees yeah um so uh the next item is the zoning hearings this is for 4050 Conrad Weiser Parkway they have submitted a variance application this was held on December seventh. Property owner would like to open a used car lot in what is now a town center where a used car lot uh, use is not permitted. Uh, zoning hearing board approved the request with conditions. Okay. Um, and then these 158 Smoltz Road. Uh, zoning hearing board. That's a good question. You said that. Yeah. And that was approved by the Senate. Excellent. Um, no, I would say it. Did they, did they approve it with? That would be conditions, but that facility, so you don't know. No, I don't think it was staff, but there was a notification. That could be on the Justin board. Okay. 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 Chuck's report, like we had before the zoning hearing board, was pretty detailed of like things that it was sufficient on. I would say, yes. I would say it was about eight. Yeah. Eight. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'll have to. I'll and then we'll get a decision in writing. Um, Within 45 days, it has to be issued, but yeah, and I'll forward that to you when we get it. Okay. Okay. Next is the donation requests. Uh, we have received donation requests from Helping Harvest, First Nature, Prime Alert, First County, and the Middle Store Community Library. The donations that we made last year, or this year, I should say. Or First County Conservation District for a total of $650, First County Library for $50, First Nature. Formerly Berks Conservancy for fifty dollars, uh, the Center for Excellence in Local Government at Great College for hundred dollars, Prime Alert Berks County for hundred dollars, Wallsdorf Community Library for two hundred, Helping Harvest for one hundred and fifty, Wallsdorf Fire for one hundred and fifty, and the Conrad Weiser Graduation Party, excuse me, for fifty dollars. Um, I think this is this is good. I don't think there's really any yeah. we just. Request for the graduation party this year. They're, they're going to, though. Well, it should have been. So they usually have it here by the December meeting. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll give you that. But I, I mean, you, you know, they're, they're, you know, they're doing it. They're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Call. Normally, we should call to the request for the meeting. Yeah, usually don't yeah. look at it. But the bottom line is we know it's the yeah. same. And we can approve it. And then we can also revisit it later if we don't receive a request. So, yeah. um, I mean, to me, all these organizations do so much for us throughout the year. And so, to me, this is unfortunately it's just a drop in the bucket as to how much is it that they truly need. So, yeah, no, it's, they're, they're all things that provide quality benefits oh, to, yeah. to our community and, and others. So, I think it's, it's, a, it's a relatively small line item and it's a good, good thing to do. Um, yes, yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, we don't have a motion on this side for today. Um, okay. You should have done it. Yeah, yeah you definitely, definitely do it on Thursday. You can do that with the same time as the budget. Yes, it's separate. Well, no, no, but I'm just saying, I can do that like in line with the budget, like we approve the budget and then. Right. Yeah. Um, Okay, we received some professional service solicitation letters. Uh, one of them is from MCS Consulting for implementation of law enforcement consulting services. I just put it to be yeah. Yeah, no, that, that, That's good to know, but yeah, just from reading through it, I don't think it's anything that we're not going to take use of. The schedule for um, Craft Municipal Group, Oslo South, and Attorney Pete Mooney. Yeah, or I actually got them published it. Okay. We got. He's going to start crash, how about that? Different design. Um, we're not getting anything Keith Mooney yet. 
um, yep. the upcoming Terra. Okay. And we have a proposal too for um, student enforcement officer from 16 to be done. Like, well, their system design is our. Is that part of that, that he might have split them up. Like he might have had two key schedules. Oh, it's a proposal. It says proposal for search and force and I wonder if he just did that because of um, okay. Well, I, we we appointed them to here as the SES. Maybe this is like technically the first time we're actually adopting the the case. Maybe this is the yeah, just the answer of the police. I don't think that. Yeah. So I, I I would say that's probably why it came through as a proposal rather than approval. But yeah. Uh, I would just put them both as system design. Uh, we'll ask Paula if we have to do two separate motions for the two fee schedules. Well, but, well yeah, well, that's, that's what I mean. Like, well, I mean, you, you don't have to put. So, what I was saying is if you, when you have the agenda, you have like the fee schedules for system design. The fee schedule for system design, whether we do one motion or two. But it's, it's Oh, he's here, though. But it's, it's, it's a proposal. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, let's let's ask Colin. We'll send an email. See, so like, we get an answer on Monday or Tuesday. That gives you time to get any last minute tweaks made at the agenda. But I'm just trying to try to go down the avenue of like, you actually have to call it a proposal because it's still a fee schedule. Yes, you do. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. 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 If if it, I think it's been ex accepted previously. And there was some contractual agreements, then I think you wouldn't have had a problem. But because it's listed as a proposal, that, it has to be accepted okay. as a proposal, and then you could accept it uh, through that's, the schedule. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Okay. Uh, the last thing on the agenda is the PSAT conference uh, and exhibit show for 2024. This is being held on Saturday, April 14th uh, through Wednesday, April 17th at Hershey Lodge. Registration opens January 9th. Become online. This is a cost of 199 per person, and a motion is needed to authorize who may attend with the cost and mileage to be paid by Mary Town. Last year, we authorized supervisors, secretarial staff, treasurer, and road crew attendant if interested. Question about that, because they have opportunities for John too. Because usually there's, you know, we have it with him because we went a few months ago. But there's a little bit there's Yeah. Yeah, it's tired Sunday. It's all around the Okay. Okay. And just John, since you've actually over because you stepped out, but uh, there's uh, an EMC section on the agenda. Do you have anything that you want to bring forward? Or we're just, I, I figured since you're here, you probably did. I'm going to make it quick. So I was hoping just to turn in the, uh, End of year report and um, a couple of things we need. But uh, next Wednesday, December 20th, I have a meeting with the fire company and all the adjoining fire companies in Marion Township to set up a training schedule to do that uh, uh, membership program for Bucks again. And I'm going to use every single hour that we're paying for for that. Um, and all the fire chiefs around us that I've talked to, to say the least, they're excited that uh, somebody's trying to get everybody together. And January 1st, we will have a new fire chief, Steve Weaver, who in the last, I say the last week, I've spoken to him more than the last three years with any other fire chief there. Um, he is very, very proactive. Um, and I'll get to an incident that we had without too much detail. But some of the trainings, the mandatory classes under the Commonwealth Hazardous Materials Awareness Operation level, uh, a few other classes. Some of the other things we are going to be pursuing is the basic and advanced fire police certifications, because right now no one has fire police certifications, and then you guys have to appoint to approve them and all that stuff, but not without training. Um, some other classes, emergency vehicle operators course, um, pumps training, and with the up and coming sewer project, uh, one of the Platform we will be working on is trench operations. Um, because so right now our closest trench response is uh Boyertown is our closest unit. 
than Yorkville and Pottsville and the city of Harrisburg. I've already talked to all the commanders of those teams. We need them there to let us know when. Um, and Boyer County is going to support the class when, once we do do it. The, when we took our little excursion up to Schuylkill County to see the EOC at Quarter Township, one of the things we saw, um, their command box, their incident management box that they have, that I found commercially are uh, the $2,200 range and with Jocelyn's ability to help me with stuff. I think I can duplicate the box for about $336. Um, so wait, let's, why don't you like slow down just a little bit so you could explain things a little bit. So I explained it in that I heard pictures. Okay. That, that Peter wasn't good. there, but this is the kind of come in and talking to some of the chiefs and stuff like that. Nobody around here has it because they don't have the time to set it up. That's where emergency management comes in for. Yeah. But that's a twenty two hundred dollars setup. And this is what Porter Township has as far as their command post box. The dry erase board, which I buy at KDM. Yeah. So um, I've been out on things with John. This is something that you need it, you need your time to we have to be able to control. We have to see where everybody's at when yeah. it dies. Um that's yeah. what helps prevents it. When you go to do that, let me know because I I rigged up not this exact same thing, but I rigged up similar stuff. Yeah, Game on. we frequently have to uh, I'll use a trademark term here, but we have to make you mouse stuff sometimes in a pinch. Um, um, and I've done so re 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 reappropriation and redistribution. Of the product. Yes, yes. So um, yeah, let me know when you go to do that. All okay, time. yeah. But yeah, no, you can do this for. But I originally found like a case with like four hundred thirty nine dollars. One of the Pelican cases. I found a vault case for one ninety nine on Amazon. Yeah. And if I can find it cheaper before then, but to get to get the authorization up to that. Yeah. And then the only thing I don't have is the magnetic dry erase boards. I have that for one thirty five seventy eight for two of them. That's combined for one thirty five. And that's in the I had all these numbers. I did give the sum in the report. The only other thing then is the. Uh, um, their SKV can be end. I like Pelican, but Pelican is too expensive in most cases. But there's uh, two these cases because I'm using boxes in my truck right now for all the ICS form papers from the, the county. And I've probably replaced the box three or four times. They don't like bubbles and they're not waterproof. I bought them stable on my, on my own, but to be able to get two of those waterproof uh, uh, file boxes. That they'll, you know, they'll be kept in my truck. Then the uh, the big one, the I know last year it, we did talk about it and brought it up, and I know you guys approved it before, but obviously I didn't go ahead with it. Um, but to get a heavy duty one of the storm proof uh, pop up tents, and I would love to have these. The picture that I have with this has lettered up and stuff. I can't warrant this condition. <laughs> Our name on it. But I'm going just as far as that picture is concerned, just without lettering. Um, but to have two sides that'll have windows on it, so if we have to set something up that uh, the individual, like we're doing an area command, like those, I know some of you were here when we had the uh, the searches here from the veterans and um, the wonderful torrential thunderstorm and downpour and stuff that we had. And um, total on that's 1485. And it is a heavy duty. I talked to Western Burks Fire, Muhlenberg Fire, City of Reading, Township of Spring. That's all. This is what they recommended because they said they were buying pop up tents like monthly from like Walmart or Lowe's and they don't last. These they've had for already four or five years. So I know it sounds like sticker shock, but this is going to last a lot longer than anything else. It's, it's like most of the other stuff, it's an, it's an investment. It's not a, a go. It's, you know, for me, it's going to be protection. If I have to put all the police and fire, you know, fire chief and stuff into one location on an incident, you know, it's when we have the, the big one, yeah, which we're going to get to in a minute. Um, and I just, again, I just was doing on my, my end of the year report was uh, for this year, I, I did get my coordinator advanced level certification. I did over 500 plus hours. And I want to say 480 hours of it, the township uh, did not have to pay for it. Um, well, so far, I know people. So far, everything that you kind of outlined here, obviously, we want to go the most cost effective route, but all of this would fit into the budget. Yes, here. I did, all, yeah, I did the numbers, and that's why I kept asking. I mean, oh, yeah, for this year. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, you could you could use as long as we get it in the next like two weeks, yeah. you could use some of this year's budget to get like pace and like. That's what I'm assuming Thursday night you guys have to approve it, and then Friday morning the order will be the order. Yeah. Um, in January, it's before the next meeting. I will be down at FEMA at the National uh, Emergency Training Center in Abbotsford for a week. Everything's paid for, paid for by FEMA, except I have to buy my meal ticket, which I won't know what that is until the week before. Um, and to get to the incident, okay, I'm not going to get into detail on a few items here, but uh, Thursday afternoon, I was called over by the fire chief and EMF to tuck me in. Um, we had a significant incident as far as uh, uh, habitation, shall we say, um, which I then contacted Craft Code while I was out there. We there's another county agency actually had to come out that night, and we actually had the, the patient uh, taken to the hospital at that point. But I went back out to code enforcement the next morning um, to evaluate that location where we were, which, because you guys will be able to read the reports on. I did three incident reports already on it in the last few days. I brought up the last one to give you. But while I was with codes, uh, with TJ, um, we did a little walk around of the tuck me. And I called the fire chief from the scene and advised him that if we have an incident there, especially at the second floor, um, uh, exactly is I advised the Marion Fire Company assistant chief Weaver, who will be the chief January 1st. Conditions we found, I suggested in the strongest terms of the safety issues and extreme risk of death to firefighters attempting to make entry to any second floor areas. Um, I will contact codes again Monday, request the uh, search warrant administrative or otherwise to visually inspect the property with fire officials to determine the level of suppression activities and rescue operations that we will work on on this property. I've already notified county that if that location, that address is dispatched, it's going to be special hazards will be listed for uh, other than the apartments on the first floor. As far as I'm concerned, we're not making entry into that building. Um, is that dangerous from what we saw? I, I attached some pictures here for you guys to see. Um, there's part of the board holding up steps to the second floor. And there's about seven or eight pictures. Like, but I have some videos of PJ, the codes, uh, cat craft codes guy, using his foot to pick up the treads that aren't attached to anything. And I, we, we both looked at the steps. Like, we're not even going to go up those steps because we're going to fall through. Um, to say the least, it is probably one of the worst hazardous locations. If it was an abandoned structure, I would I would expect those conditions. Um, it's there's people living in this building. There's holes through the roof, so I a lot of that documented and working with uh, codes. And I know I spoke to uh, Glenn Kraft himself Thursday and Friday, and he's taken a little particular interest in this to himself. And he has his code guy Glenn uh, Bertolet is working on it on his end, and. Uh, it's, um, um, but dangerous is an understatement, and I talked to the, I talked to the fire chief. He is in 100% agreement because he was out there with us Thursday. Um, on what we're going to do with that, and then the last is uh, this is police is on the meeting. To so police, uh, police, do have a meeting time for Thursday? Police, police have a. Police report you have on the agenda for Thursday? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
item on the agenda. Um, I do not have any uh, comments other than I hope everybody had a very good Thanksgiving. Happy Hanukkah. Thank you. Um, and uh, see everybody Thursday night. Erin, do you have any comments? Um, the computers. Yes. So I actually, I came in early and I looked at a couple of things. I need to look at yours still because you have office installed on your computer. I don't know why you can't find it. I'm it's not there, room. but. Sleep on my computer. I couldn't flick on the calculator. It won't do anything except for QuickBooks. And I can't retrieve anything off of the screen. I have I'll, to use the flash drive. I'll look at it. Yeah. This, the little USB thing, won't die. Like you plug it into another computer and it just dings at you constantly, which is the stuff that's super. So um, I we have a spare one of these. The mouse is somewhere over in that room. I just swapped it and it started working again. Um, so I gotta look at, at your computer and then I gotta change the setting of the servers so that it doesn't restart because that's that's what's causing to agree is it periodically does system well, well okay yeah none of us can get on I, I will I will phrase that a little bit differently that's what's causing the grief is the fact that it's set to automatically update and then it's it's sometimes halting during boot like it's just stop that yes oh well, I'm gonna effectively what yeah. I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off automatic updates and then once a month I'll just patch one of them right um so if it's if it's causing friction it's gonna be easy enough change for me to make um it's not coming in perfect. It's an aggravation. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear Sorry. Yeah. We can't do anything. And the problem is, unfortunately, you're not a parent. Yeah. You're not there, not a teacher. Yeah. And you're out of town. Is there someone that you know that we could contact that could come in and troubleshoot for us? Because that's the biggest problem. Let me let me look at it today before I leave, okay. and I'll make some changes there because this was originally put in under I'll say the premise of kind of something. Just mm -hmm. patch on its own, restarts overnight. It's okay. So if it's not recovering from an automatic restart the way that it should, I just have to take away the automatic restart. Okay. Um, and like I said with yours, I got I haven't even begun to dig at it, but I got to figure that out because I had. You had Excel, you had Word, you had all the uh, stuff there. Yes, because Melissa installed it. But no, then, I, I installed it after that. So. Um, well, so sometimes it pulls up the old program, sometimes it pulls up the new okay. program. Um, I guess my, my other question is, is the G1 license with something? I, forget yeah. it. I know I am not that familiar. Yeah. Will that enable us to use things like Copilot and some of the other features? Okay. Copilot Copilot's expensive. Okay, yeah. I, I just was curious about that. Um, but again, like these are things that, that we need this license agreement yeah. and everything so on the list of yeah. like exchange going for our yeah. to you or to do I'm, it. Yeah. I'm gonna be around this week and okay. yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 All these problems stop us from doing what I we need to do on a daily basis. Okay. We're not trying to attack you, but we need a, a solution to this problem. And if you're not available, then you need to put us in contact with someone who can exactly. come in and, and do the troubleshooting. We need to be able to pick up the phone and say, hey, can you come in? Well, with, mean, you know, if you guys want to look at getting some sort of IT for next year, that's fine. We can do that. Do you have anything but you could recommend? I, I would have to look around. My stuff is done at corporate. Okay. So. We, we'd appreciate you give us some input. Because it just, it's so crushing because it stops everything. Yeah. Absolutely everything. There's days like I, I I could I could access QuickBooks, but I can't access everything else that I need. I mean, and 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 that for me is just a fringe of the problems for what they have to experience. Yeah. 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 Y
we don't know how to guess that stuff and we don't know what services that we need and you can get a better feel for you know what is it is that we need yeah yeah i'll i'll do a little digging and research on it but in the time being like i said that's i can change that over there if that's not behaving the way that it was expected to behave it's an easy enough pivot and then i go to your computer and find out why it's not yeah, it's well, to... it really doesn't access anything off of any of the files that I've saved to the screen. Like I have a whole bunch of like Excel spreadsheets and all this other stuff. I can't click on the you can see the icon. You just can't, click can't on. won't won't pull up anything. Okay. Oh, we won't boil the ocean yeah. this one. If you have a couple of minutes before you have to, to go to work, let's look at that. Um, any other comments? No, no, thank you. Okay. you also... Um, no, the only thing is when I leave, do you guys need like for me, or can you just kind of send a letter of resignation? I guess it doesn't have to be anything long, just you know. I quit. No. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's just to, to, I guess close the, the section yeah. out. Um, our new assistant secretary. Do you have anything? Just one thing we were notified that even disposal will be merging with AJ Lazensky Incorporated on January 1st, 2024. They're both members of the Waste Connections family. Nothing will change with the anyone contract, the current rate of the billing cycle or scheduled pickup. Service will continue under uninterrupted. I guess we're going to get bills from AJ Lazensky now. Yeah, that's what they said. And invoices will now be from AJ Lazensky. Yeah. We've heard of them that since I stopped giving because there's been chatter on the We have to put the um RFP for waste services because our contract expires in like mm -hmm. April. So we gotta do that beginning of January. Mm -hmm. Yay. Yay. Um okay. seeing no other items on the agenda or comments from the board, make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Time is now 946. Second. Uh, Peter. I read five. Peter. Thank you, everyone. I think I haven't been ahead of 41 minutes.